we are connected to everything. Science is even starting to say that. But are you conscious of it? Can you feel it? Do you feel any of that? We need to learn these things again. We have to bring it back into ourselves. When we're born, we, we have this basic knowingness. These things are basic knowingness for our being, for our song. And the only reason we don't know it now is because it got taught out of us. We were taught how to think, how to feel, all this stuff. And you have to forget everything the way you learned it and start learning how to feel what is really there. The key of it all is feeling with your spirit, with your song, with your heart, and with the rest of your body. Mostly it's that we call our spirit senses, our spirit feeling. That's how we see what the beauty really is. How extensive it is, how deep it goes, how profound it is, how full of love it is, how full of love the whole universe is. When we learn who we are, we feel that, we learn it, we experience it, we know it. Then we get to where it's not just in the ceremony times that we're able to feel these things, but it's every day, all day, every day. And it's, it becomes the, the way we are and what we do, no matter what else is going on and how big of an ugly pile of dishes you've got sitting there in front of you or the toddlers screaming, <laughs> beating each other up. There's so much beauty, even in all of that, in, even in the mundane and the everyday and like you pointed out, Laura, the, whatever it is we learn, we experience, we feel, we are sending it into the, the common human consciousness, the collective consciousness of us all, so that everybody learns from what we experienced and we learn. But you have to do it for yourself first. It's like learning how to swim. You can't not know how to swim. Jump out into the middle of the lake and try to save a drowning person. Just does not work. That doesn't happen. You have to do it for yourself first. Do any of you guys have experiences with that, of realizing you have to do it for yourself first so that you can, then it shares with everybody else? I can answer to that. I, I'll start. I remember when I first started doing the song ceremony and I had started off just doing it once or twice a week. And then I was really paying attention to how I felt afterwards. And it like it set a precedent for the whole day. And I just felt my whole energy shift every time that I did a song ceremony. And it was empowering. And then I just started to make it into a habit of doing it every single day. And, and then I started doing it like two times a day and <laughs> do it before I went to bed. Every chance I could get it in, I would get it in until I could really start to feel my song, even without the song ceremony. But until I started to have that desire and feel that, that feeling, I didn't, I just had to go under faith <laughs> that you knew what you're talking about. <laughs> but once I got a little taste of it, that desire to continue to do it, and then my intention to wake up helped fuel it. And then I just kept choosing it. And then I would add in other practices that, I mean, and that's what you just start with what you can do. That's what I, I could listen to a song ceremony once a day. I got up a little early and listened to the song ceremony. And that's how I started to make the commitment of where, okay, for this one hour, I'm going to make this my intention. This is my desire to get to know my song more. And gosh, for me, it just snowballed. Once I made that one commitment and got the taste of what it does, how it opens you up and how it 
makes you realize you can live from that knowingness that you're infinite and eternal. Gosh, that's a great first step. And then you just explore it every single time you do a song ceremony. Gosh, Laura, share. That's how it started with me. That's yeah. how I read the book, but that's how it really started to snowball for me was that commitment. They say, put your oxygen mask on first. And I, that always sat with me. I it was raised with not being selfish. Don't be selfish. I, it was like, you're let every, take care of everybody else before you take care of yourself. But it's, you start seeing an exhausted person, almost a disabled person because they're so worn out how a refreshed person could take care of a, a family better than an exhausted person <laughs> could, could take care of a family. When it, it, it's just, I it started being more aware of what Kay has in it. And I strongly suggest people going to YouTube and our Kay's YouTube station and searching for the frog medicine story. I, I, I would, it's everything. 